Welcome to World Drum Club, everyone. I'm Kalani Das, your host and teacher, and we're going to be looking at gongs in this session. There's been a rise in the popularity of gongs uh, in recent years, especially in the sound healing or sound therapy world. You might be familiar with the term gong bath, but we're going to look at the bigger gong picture right now um, with a view to helping you determine which gong you might want to purchase or which gong you might want to rent or use for a certain job or which kind of gongs you're interested in. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you four different gongs, starting with this one. This, just for reference, and I'll put all the information down in the lower corner um, for each gong, but um, this is a 26-inch symphonic gong made by Peisty. And this is a really typical style of gong for orchestras. You see these in lots of uh, college and high school uh, band rooms. It's your typical symphonic gong. And it's modeled after a more traditional Chinese gong that I'm going to show you coming right up. But let's give it a listen. Uh, first, we'll talk about how to play the gong. Usually, we play the gongs with big mallets, right? Really big mallets. This is a pretty big one. Um, the bigger the gong, the bigger the mallet, generally. So you want the mallet to fit the size of the gong. I have some very small gongs. We use small mallets. You know, that's just kind of common sense. This one is one style. We'll look at some different style of mallets, too, because each gong... Um, you know, from different regions around the world, they have their own style of mallets. But this is pretty basic. Um, I guess we call this kind of the sheep, sheep wool or wool covered gong. It's really pretty uh, poofy and big and has a metal handle. When we play a gong, typically um, we're going to warm it up. We, we don't hit gongs absolutely cold. So what we like to do is just very quietly you know, get it vibrating a little bit, then we can go in for a hit, or if it's a, a swell or, a, you know, a gradual increase in volume, we can play that. So what I would do is warm this up a little, get it vibrating very softly, um, and then hit the gong. We want to hit the gong, right? So I'm just going to hit this so you can hear it. Not a great sound if you're on a variety show, especially if it's called the gong show. You can look that up. One of the things that I think is interesting about any gong is that it's a very complex sound with lots of different frequencies. Some gongs, as we'll see coming up, will have more what we call fundamental or a tone, an actual tone. This gong has a wide spectrum. Some uh, gongs favor the kind of what we call white or pink noise. So it's just more of a complex kind of wash sound. This one has a definite pitch. And uh, what's interesting to me is that when you, if, if you mute the gong in different areas, the rest of the gong will keep going. So it's really hard to mute an entire gong. I wanna show you an example. So I'm gonna play the gong. I'm gonna mute it in the middle, which will kind of cancel out the low frequencies, but a lot of the high frequencies are gonna remain. Not as loud, of course, but they're, just listen for that as a remnant. So that last pitch you heard was the edge vibrating. Let's do the opposite. Let's mute the edge this time and you'll hear kind of the lower notes in the center. Continuing. So you don't hear the real low notes, but you hear some other notes going on. So when you mute a gong, you want to kind of grab it like <laughs> with your entire forearm. Or, or just me make sure you're muting in different areas. Like my hand on the back here is going in the middle and then I could, you know, grab it like that. That's just for people that are really interested in gong muting. So let's talk about how to play a gong and ways you can play a gong. So like a drum, a gong has a node in the center. So we don't usually hit it right in the middle. We're gonna get more attack sound. It's not going to get the metal uh, vibrating as much as if we hit it just off center. So I would say the playing area for most gongs is gonna be, well, conveniently, um, 
between the dot and the edge in this area, just off center, and you'll have different frequencies and harmonics that come out depending on where you hit the gong. So if I hit it more near the center, it's gonna be lower. So that would be a richer tone, kind of favoring the, the deeper tones. If I hit it more towards the edge, it should be brighter with more overtones. Maybe a little. Uh, we can certainly do a gong roll, and if you play the gong, you'll notice that there's a certain um, give to it. There's a, there's a certain bounce or flow that you want to have when you're playing the gong. And it, every gong's different, so you just play it and you listen and you feel how it's responding. like most instruments you can change your mallet so this is a commercially available mallet and this one is one that I made in college from a hockey puck and I even put a <laughs> treble a treble note treble clef uh, with a C for common time I guess on there um, but this is a hockey puck on a stick and it's a little bit harder it's a little firmer So what I am experiencing right now with this is that it brings out more brightness, it gets the gong vibrating faster, you know, so depending on what your goals are musically, um, you want to change the mallet you're using. In another video, I'm going to show you how to make some sound effects with a gong, but right now we're going to move on and look at a completely similar type of gong. So this gong is from China. It was made in Wuhan, China, and we generally call these chow gongs. Um, the predecessor to the thinner and brighter sounding symphonic gong that I just showed you. So this would be more of an like, original, what we think of as an original gong. Although gongs uh, were made in Asia, Southeast Asia for a long time, and there's different kinds. But this is a real typical Chinese gong. This is a 28 inch. Here it is again with, with the mallet that came with it. buzzing and I don't know if that's just the the rope here on the on the back or if there's a tiny crack in the gong somewhere I have to look at that it could be either way I think it's an awesome sounding gong it's a little bit you know darker sounding um, not as many highs as the symphonic gong but still amazing sound um, big mallet if I go with a smaller mallet let's see if I use the hockey puck what that will sound like
So you know what's pretty amazing is I've, I've just got my hand back here in the back and I can uh, feel a lot of air moving off of this as you can imagine. So, you know, like I said, gongs are kind of popular with the sound healer crowd, uh, sound therapy, sound healing. And uh, for, for a good reason, I guess, we get a, a lot of sound out of them and they're, they have this, what we call a vibrotactile uh, sensation. In other words, you can really feel uh, the vibrations coming off of the instrument. So that's our 28 inch. Um, we're going to move on and look at two more gongs now. Uh, very different, yet similar. So this is a little bit smaller gong, thinner gong, much more affordable, very flat. Unlike the other two gongs that I've shown you, this does not have a flanged or embossed edge. It's just like a giant cymbal, pretty flat. And we generally refer to these as wind gongs. I'm not sure what the Chinese name is, but this also made in China, probably Wuhan. Let's check. Yeah, I believe so. You can check on the back, there's labels. Um, this gong is characterized by a relatively quick decay, lots of high-end harmonics, um, that what we call pink noise or white noise, and a very low presence of any kind of fundamental tone. So it's good as a sound effect. It won't intrude into the music as much as a pitched gong would. Here it is again. So really popular with studio musicians and small, you know, orchestras uh, or even big orchestras. It's great for sound effects. It's very responsive. You can choke it quickly. Uh, so really useful and actually surprisingly affordable. So if you're looking to get into some gongs, not literally, there's not much room. If you're very tiny, you could probably climb in. If you're looking to get into some gongs, uh, I would recommend starting with a wind gong and you can search and find one. This is a... Not a, a really large gong, but you can, these wind gongs come in smaller sizes and can get quite big, as can all these gongs. All right, we're gonna move on to our fourth and final instrument right now, something really special. This is a gong from Java, Javanese or Balinese style gong. Um, really interesting, very different from the other gongs that we've heard, especially the wind gong. It's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, also called nipple gong because of this embossed center area. And even though you can play the edges or the side area, you know, outside of the center, it's mainly played in the center to get a low resonant tone. And I'm using the traditional mallet. Like I said, each gong comes with its own style of mallet. This is the gong, this is the mallet that came with this gong. And that's a very pure fundamental tone. There's hardly anything else happening. You notice when I first hit it, we had some uh, vibrations, like some sort of uh, aliasing, and that's really interesting. So another gong you can hang out with, sit down, and actually, whoop, as I'm talking, I'm hearing this uh, sympathetic vibration. So it's picking up some of the notes from my voice, and it's resonating those back out to me, which is interesting. Um, you can do a lot of things with gongs. I recommend that you explore these instruments as much as you can. They're some of our oldest percussion instruments that are made out of metal. And again, you can investigate everything from China down to Southeast Asia, uh, the Balinese gongs, um, all over the Pacific Rim um, countries and over into Turkey, of course. 
uh, where we had the origins of what we think of as our modern day cymbals and triangles and other percussion, lots of metal instruments. Wow, so I'm just gonna continue to play this. I wanna thank you for watching. I will post some separate videos of playing, just playing each one of these gongs if you wanna hear them more uh, without the lecturing part. Um, I wanna thank you for joining me here on World Drum Club. And as always, we appreciate your support, likes, comments, and uh, donations over at patreon.com slash Kalani. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.